You're listening to ReachMD, the channel for medical professionals. Welcome to Heart Matters, where leading cardiology experts explore the latest trends, technologies, and clinical developments in cardiology practice. Your host for Heart Matters is Dr. Janet Wright, Senior Vice President for Science and Quality for the American College of Cardiology. A growing body of evidence tells us that human cardiomyocytes are capable of regeneration. The concept has been debated in medicine for some time, but as more data accumulate in support of this theory, it's tantalizing to think of novel treatment strategies. How might the possibilities of cardiac cell regeneration change the dynamic of care for patients with myocardial infarction, for example? Our guest today is Dr. Stefan Jovinge. Dr. Jovinge is director of the cardiovascular group at the Lund Stem Cell Center at Lund University in Sweden an associate professor and head of the coronary intensive care unit at Lund University Hospital. Welcome, Dr. Jovinge. Thank you. This is a a very, to say exciting, sounds sort of plain and vanilla. I can't find an adjective that describes my enthusiasm for this area of research. Maybe you could start at a very basic level and, and describe to us what has been the thinking up until now about the heart's ability to produce new muscle cells? There have been two uh, extremes of the feats up to now. The mainstream being in favor of no generation of cardiomyocytes in the adult individual at all. And the other groups that have claimed that there has been an extensive generation of new cardiomyocytes in the adult heart so that even that there would be a complete replenishment of the uh, cardiomyocyte population within five years in an adult individual, which is the other extreme then. And into this area of science with those extremes, you have done some and published some recent research. You're bringing science to the area of extremes. Describe to us what you've published. The big problem when one tries to start the generation of cardiomyocytes is that in humans, and the main field has mainly studied generation in animals, and that they are more short-lived than in humans which at least have a life expectancy of eight decades, any low rate of generation will be hard to identify. And so what we have done together with in Stockholm, which did the same thing for the generation of cells in the brain, is that taking the advantage of the carbon-14 content in the atmosphere. And it's not very much different from what the archaeologists have done for decades that they have found a piece of log in the wood and and then dated it with carbon-14, which has decay, a half-time decay of 5,500 years, and thereby you can calculate by the carbon-14 content the, the actually birth of the organic material in that log, the birth date. But that is a very inaccurate or it has a very low resolution so it will actually give you an estimate over several decades actually a hundred years. Not particularly helpful for this work. No. So the only advantage of the I would say the nuclear blasts uh, which uh, were done uh, during the 50s about surface nuclear tests by US and then later Soviet Union is that you got a carbon-14 content upload in the atmosphere far more than what's natural. And then 1963, I think it was President Johnson and Khrushchev who actually agreed on uh, to ban uh, about surface tests. And then since then there has been a very well-defined decrease in the carbon-14 content in the atmosphere. And that will actually stabilize with all organic material at a given time point from then until now, the content in the atmosphere will actually stabilize with all the organic material produced at a certain time point. By that, you can actually estimate when an organic molecule is, has been produced. And, and for cells, the DNA is produced at the time of the birth of the cell. And by that, we have sorted out DNA from cardiomyocytes 
in hearts of deceased individuals. And by the carbon-14 content measurement in the DNA, actually been able to estimate when the cardiomyocytes were born in that particular individual. And by that, we could actually see that in average, the cardiomyocyte age was about six years younger than the individual itself. And based on this novel application of nuclear testing to DNA analysis and myocyte regeneration, what have you learned about the replacement rate at different ages in the human? In uh, younger individuals, the first decades of life, it seems like we have a new generation of cardiomyocytes which would annual rate of about 1% of the whole population, but this will decline uh, over decades. So at the, at the seventh, eighth decade, you are fractions of a percentage of the cardiomyocytes which are replenished. So if we put our work in the context of previous work, we will find ourselves more towards the low generation of cardiomyocytes than the high generation of cardiomyocytes in the adult. So in the end, when you are about 80 years old, somewhat less than half of your cardiomyocytes were generated after birth. If you're just joining us, you're listening to Heart Matters on ReachMD, the channel for medical professionals. I'm your host, Dr. Janet Wright, and our guest today is Dr. Stefan Jovinge, Director of the Cardiovascular Group at the Lund Stem Cell Center at Lund University in Sweden. We're discussing the possibilities of novel treatments based on endogenous cardiomyocyte renewal. And speaking of novel treatments, <laughs> Dr. Jovingi, talk to us about implications for this kind of advancement in our knowledge. From the standpoint of today, it will actually have no implications at all. But what we actually, we are, of course, and everyone who read this report, I would guess, who are, is in this field are pursuing the follow-ups. And the main follow-up is, of course, to understand What's happening in a non disease in a diseased heart? Is there an induction of this generation of cardiomyocytes in, in adult? And if it is, if it is, so is that within a certain area of the heart? Those are main issues to be addressed and which we are addressing. That will then have implications for future therapies, of course, making it possible to, to find ways to induce this generation. Of cardiomyocytes. I mean, I, only for my kin, clinical experience, it's of course that if you you have a severe myocardial infarction, you will never have a complete regain of function after that myocardial infarction. But on the other hand, if you look on my very young patients, which they have extraordinary recovery when uh, they recover from the myocardial infarction, but it's only non-scientific experience uh, from if I would have put the current data into my own experience. But the main issue is what's happening in the disease talk because this study has been, was done on forensic victims which died of non-cardiac disease. Right, so the next phase would be to take diseased hearts, either those from ischemic disease, prior infarction, or heart failure, for example, and begin to study the regeneration rate in that population with an eye toward developing some sorts of treatments that prod this regeneration process. That's right. So to spell it out loud, if you get your uh, get a heart transplantation at our center, you will be asked to donate your explanted heart to us for these studies. And those patients are both people with cardiomyopathy and people with ischemic heart disease. And then, then, of course, we wonder if there is a higher rate of generation in these hearts trying to compensate for the failure. If there is a natural mechanism for that, then, of course, there should be a pathway to induce this generation. Many of these strategies could be a substitute or perhaps complementary to the research that's going on in cell transplantation. Yes. So at our center, we're actually doing both studies for both. Actually, that's how it all 
also started because one main finding in this study is, of course, that you have we have a generation in the heart in the adult. But another key finding, which is in this paper too, is that one op- main obstacle when you study heart is that or cardiomyocytes is that they only comprise about 20 or 30 percent of the total cell population in the heart, and that has been the a main issue to the field. So I think um, that is actually one of the reasons why people have come up with so different results, that maybe some people study not cardiomyocytes, that they actually have been studying other cells in the heart. And in this paper, we actually have shown a way to sort out the nuclei from only cardiomyocytes. And that's what we also are doing to sort out cells in the very same manner that the hematologists are doing for bone marrow cells. So really your work is both propelled and at some point hindered by the technology, whether that's an imaging technology or by a chemical tracer, ways to use the technology to help identify and then target the appropriate cell. Yes, that's the main objective, I would say. Perhaps you could, in our closing minutes, share with the audience what the particular obstacles are Im- immediately in front of you? If you could solve X today, how would that advance your work? From the cell therapy point of view, we, we are one obstacle is, of course, there are two routes to, to find the right cell. One route would, would be to find the right cell in the adult, and that the main issue is is this generation, is this a result of a certain cell type of the heart, or is it just that all cardiomyocytes actually have the ability to generate new cardiomyocytes, but at a very low rate? That, If we could solve that, and if there is a certain cell type, to find that cell type which would, of course, be a main obstacle which we would like to overcome. The other route is, of course, to sort out immature but competent cardiomyocytes from embryonic stem cell cultures or IPS, which are induced embryonic cells, which originate from adult cells. And we are both on, on both, working on both roads, actually. Excellent. Not to uh, create a pun here, but those embryonic stem cells have tremendous potential to contribute to improvements in therapy. They have. When working on all these cells, the main obstacle is, of course, to have clean cell populations which only make your cardiomyocytes and have no tumorogenic potential at all. So at our cell and at all the others who are trying this, it's not only an issue of, of sorting out right cells. It's also an issue of sorting away in cells which could possibly be harmful. Let's go back to what you were just saying about getting that pure population of cells. Can you talk a little bit more about that? I think there is a lot of fields that have tried to find the cell therapy to replenish injured organs or failing organs. And, and the only field which has been successful is the field of hematology. And I think that one of the main reasons for that is that they have taken care to actually develop methods to isolate pure cell populations which are homogenous, only one cell type, so that when they want to study and also work with a certain cell type or transplant, they can actually be very specific in what they are doing. And that is actually one of the main objectives for us to actually when you want to transplant a cardiomyocyte, you want to transplant a cardiomyocyte into an individual which is a cardiomyocyte and and has no other potential at all, just to decrease the risk of getting a disadvantageous development of that cell. We've been talking with Dr. Stavin Jovinge about the endogenous cardiomyocyte renewal. Dr. Jovinge, thank you for being our guest today. Thank you. You've been listening to Heart Matters on ReachMD, the channel for medical professionals. For more information on this week's show or to download a podcast of this segment, please visit us at ReachMD.com. Thank you for listening.